at ease, soldier. Let me uh, turn off that stupid speaker because it's likely to stop, start humming at any time. Okay. Well, I had made that video about uh, the just the just the benzos, ma'am, video, and uh, I think it come out pretty well. I mean, it's a long story. My style is, you know, I'm a slow talker. And I realized that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because I was watching this video. This, it's like a 25-year-old, gorgeous, smart, vivacious woman. I'm obviously a very lonely man of a different age bracket. So there's a lot of appeal, in, of appeal in that to me to watch that. I actually had to mute the sound to it while, while I was writing to her. You know, like writing stuff because she had a couple of misconceptions. And I'm like, like, man, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you know? It's like, Okay, so I kind of get it now. That's Maybe that's why some people listen to me. Is like uh, I used to joke about being a human sleeping pill or whatever. But there's nothing wrong with a nice, leisurely, relaxing, slow-paced talking. Um, sort of off-the-cuff, non-scripted, slightly foolish person like myself. I mean, and... Maybe I have a pleasant voice, even though I feel like my voice is messed up now. As far as, um, you know, what they did to my mouth. But I did, I watched a couple of uh, other people's uh, videos about uh, benzo issues, you know. And this one guy was on there and he didn't understand, like, uh, the process. So, I kind of like explained to him, like, yeah, you're feeling those sensations in your body because and this is a misconception that the, uh, I'm just going to say annoying. I'm sorry. She was annoying. The annoying, uh, beautiful woman had was like, it's a brain thing. It's like, no, no, no. You got GABA receptors all through your body. Your brain just interprets everything. So, it seems like it's all going on up here but you actually have the most GABA receptors in your digestive tract which kind of gives me a little bit of hope because I revealed on here because you know I'm not a completely don't give a fuck person but a little bit is that like you know I have to wear diapers because I don't have like real fine some, you know I don't know what's going on down there in the way somebody that hasn't had spinal reconstruction surgeries and has CRPS and all that stuff. And I'm like, like, wait a minute, like, that started kind of after the benzo thing. So maybe if I can get off of the benzos, you know, and if most of my um, GABA reception problems are centered in my digestive tract, you know, maybe I won't, I can improve in that area. Because, um, lately that has been a problem. I got sick. I didn't have that kind of a flu. But, like, like come on already, man. It's like I'm getting tired of, like, what do I have to do? Okay, how many of these pills do I have to take before this stops? But I don't like to talk about that stuff. You know, it's like, yeah, 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 it's basic, you know. There's a bunch of women out there probably laughing at me being with uh, my Victorian sensibilities about excretory functions, you know, that's like, uh, ain't you ever changed a diaper on a baby? The answer to that would be no. <laughs> so, you know. Um, <laughs> but anyways, um... Yeah, so, I see these videos of these people, you know, and, like, I get, like, 
maybe it's because of the volume or whatever, but even when I was kind of like the new kid on the block, I think I didn't get a lot of views, you know, it's, I have an off-putting, something about me that's off-putting to people, but the same thing that's off-putting about me is probably appealing to a very small segment of people. So hello, very small segment of people. Um, I don't, you know, I had people tell me stuff like, uh, you need to cut your video length down. You need to script yourself. Maybe you should think about adding background music, you know, or graphics. Oh, it's like, dude, <laughs> I'm in pencil withdrawal. I barely put salt on my meals, man. <laughs> I'm not into doing anything extra. So, you know, I'm not going to, like, insert clips to make this more entertaining or whatever. It's just going to be me talking. Okay, I mean, I wouldn't know how to do that stuff anyway. And, uh, when I was a kid in high school, um, trying to think of, um, oh, I think it was Perry High School, and uh, they first got computers in the classroom. They were real proud of that, you know, but they were like square, useless computers that could do barely anything. So I'm just from a different generation, okay. Like I said, I'm more of your uh, feet propped up on the Cracker Barrel, corn cob pipe smoking, uh, Mark Twain motherfucker. That's me. Uh, anyways, so, yeah, I did... Uh, I made that video a while ago, you know, and I had to go edit it out and try to shorten it as much as possible, and um, it still was 35 minutes. I couldn't get it to 30 minutes and have it make sense, but um, something happened with the chart, because the chart was so long, because, you know, a blank space still counts as a letter. There's just a lot of blank spaces and numbers in it for large parts of it. Um, so I couldn't fit it anywhere. I couldn't fit it in a single comment. I couldn't fit it under, in the description. So I had to take it like comment by comment. So I did it month by month and I did it like backwards. So it'd be all arranged real nicely, not knowing that, um, it would get mixed up. It gets mixed up because of, uh, I don't know why. Okay. I'm not going to say why. I, I kind of know why, but I'm not going to say why. Because uh, I am, deep down, a sweetheart. So, uh, but anyways, um, this guy was like beating himself up because he's like, he's only taking, people get hung up on the, on the dosage with uh, benzos. They're like, he's like, I'm only taking like 10 milligrams of volume a day. And I'm like, like, uh, that doesn't matter, man. It, it, everybody is different with this shit. And, like, doctors need to get that. That's like, uh, some people, they get dropped off of it. And, uh, guess what? That happened to my, uh, aunt. Not in the best of health. She said it bothered her a little bit. Other people get dropped off. They have seizures and die. Everybody's different. That's what the doctors don't get. So, like, 10 milligrams of volume to this dude is a huge deal. And to me, you know, that's a good day. If, I, if right now, if I can get through it with 10 milligrams of volume. I haven't taken any volume yet today. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So, um, I'm feeling a little bit, you know. But, um, yeah, I should start watching other people's videos. And I don't need, you know, I'm not interested in a big viewership or anything like that. But, I mean, just watching other people's videos to learn. Okay? Um, and sometimes I can be helpful in the comments. You know? I remember I did something, and this is really short, that, uh, this guy um, 
had a benzo deal, but he was like more talking about himself. Like he's never comfortable unless he's alone. He just doesn't really get along with people, you know, and he's a loner and stuff. So I'm going to try to pronounce this guy's name yet again. Satra, I think, has this quote, hell is other people. And uh, so that's what I wrote. It's just quotation marks, hell is other people, slash Sartre. It's just a, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's S-A-T-R-E, philosopher dude. So, um, you know, that made that guy's day. <laughs> so yeah, I should be, um, I should like watch more of other people's videos instead of just being on here trying to survive making my own and um it's kind of funny like i i made a post where i just look just a bare bones outline of like the various disastrous things that happen while i'm trying to uh get off like the worst benzo and having no help from uh, any medical help from it at all i'm just uh you know kind of on my own, and, uh, yeah, so I, I, I kind of feel like, you know, um, watching those other folks, like, kind of gives me a perspective on myself, it's, it's kind of, like, nice to have somebody that's, like, you know they're going through the same crap that you're going through, but they're calm, and they're smiling, and they're occasionally funny. Now, I'm not always like that, and I'm not always a barrel of monkeys, you know. You can be pretty harsh and um, pretty dark, you know, I'm running the spectrum, but... Um, I think it's just, yeah, I think that the benzo people that kind of hang around and watch these, they're like, you know, calms them down, maybe. And that's a good thing. I had somebody tell me that, you know. And, uh, hey, happy to serve. But, yeah, I should do more of that. I should do more of what I did this morning, which was watch other people's videos and be be more giving. This is kind of like, being a taker and being selfish and giving at the same time because, you know, this is, uh, you, you know how much I love the sound of my own voice, but at the same time, I am aware that I am uh, talking for the benefit of other people, so I try to do it as well as possible. And um, this one guy was like kicking himself for like being all over the place. And it's like, that's just your perception. You know, you went all over the place. I'm the all over the place guy. It's just the way my brain works, you know. Um, I think the Germans have a word for it, gestalten. That's when you see, like, you don't see the individual trees. You see the whole forest. So when you see the whole forest, it's, it's easy <laughs> to... Uh, <laughs> not go from tree to tree, point to point, you know, to have like a, uh, what do you call it, a um, simple line of uh, thought, you know, because to me everything is connected, you know, there's, everything's a forest that we have to navigate through, but uh yeah, I, was, I thought about that, you know, I was like, yeah, that was actually, because she thought it was all a brain thing, didn't realize, you know, the other guy was like, man, I got stuff going on in my feet, I got stuff going on, like, um, neuropathy type things in my legs, and, you know, my hands tingle sometimes, and I'm like, hey, I get that a lot, you know, I didn't, I, I told him that, I said, yeah, I get that too, uh, but I didn't mention the part about me having a heart condition, you know, because it's not fun 
especially if it's in my left hand, to have my hand tingling for no reason. There's, I have a couple of videos where I'm like doing this because my hand's tingling for no reason. I was like, oh yeah, I get that too. I don't know. Uh, yeah, other people, like, I also kind of feel like a little guilty because other people, it's like always the med medical commu community is always fucking them over. And, you know, I do this to myself. You don't put anything in your body unless you look it up and learn about it. You know, you don't just up and take a pill. Now, you could say those medical people, like, you know, the, or the people that got screwed over by the medical people were just doing the same thing. They were just trusting their doctor to know what's best for them. So they didn't do no research either. But, you know, I just got a pill off of, off of somebody and took it. That's a little different, I think. So I give them a little more credit, you know. But there's different ways to look at it. Um, it's, na it's a natural thing. It's something they probably teach in medical schools to have that aura of authority. You know, to comfort and calm the patient. You know, I am, I don't, I almost said career patient just because my medical problems started when I was so young. I have so much experience with the medical community. It's like, um, you may have heard me say this before, but my first benzo I ever took was given to me uh, <laughs> to calm me down. And they didn't tell, it was halcyon, and they didn't tell me that one of the uh, unusual sad effects of it is temporary paralysis, and this is after I had a spinal tube removed when I was 16 years old. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, long history with uh, how they behave. So I'm like, why in the hell didn't you tell me that? You know. And uh, they were like, well... It's the power of suggestion. We don't like... Th this was different times. You know, this is in the 80s. Uh, we don't like to tell people um, about uh, side effects of drugs because it puts the ideas in their heads. And now it's a different world. Like, they tell you that whatever medication on those commercials, they tell you, you know, that uh, it causes your... Uh, explosive diarrhea or whatever like they're trying to sell their product and says may cause uh ex explosive diarrhea <laughs> it's just completely different back then you know they kept you in the dark they just like here you go pop this it'll be good for you there's no they didn't they didn't like informed patients the last thing they wanted was an informed patient uh telling them what's up and uh it didn't take me long to figure that shit out. And uh, before long, oh, and it, it only took me a couple of years to be like, like, in so many words, fuck you. It's like, I ain't doing that. Or like, they'd tell me to go to these appointments, and I'd be, just to get out of there, I'd be like, okay. Then I'd just blow them off. You know, it's like, cause I don't want to argue with no no guy, no stupid doctor. I had a guy s wanting to send me to a wound center that they had set up. And I was like, I know you, dude. You're the guy that I had bronchitis and you wanted to take sinus x-rays. And we both know that I got bronchitis and that you're paying for the equipment that you have in your office because now you have x-ray machines in your office. And... They need to be used to be paid for. You know, I, this is when I was young, like 17. And it's like, like, I was hip to this stuff pretty quick. Um, well, point being, a lot of people aren't. You know, they're like, uh, they look at doctors as people that know everything. God like human beings that w went to school and, um, studied at the feet of masters and all that you know, like special people Let's believe me they are not special people 
there are people that have bad days, that have off days, that uh, occasionally will fart in front of you and uh, pretend like, you know, the smell is just an ambience in the room. <laughs> you know, they're just like us. They just went to school and learned some stuff and know a lot of uh, technical lingo. And a lot of them aren't very good and don't know what they're doing. I mean, um, this was, that's why it wasn't, a, that's why I was actually expecting my doctor to screw up with the benzos and uh, had planned on withdrawing because I was watching videos and I'm like, yeah, these, these guys are getting dropped off and it's like, I was learning and reading up on the stuff and I'm like, well, shit, I don't want that to happen. So that's why I had a couple extra pills left over. And even before he cut my script, I was already exper experimenting with taking less than what was prescribed, you know. And I just tell him, you know, no. It's a real useful two-letter word. And I remember, like like I said, when I told... Uh, um, I think it was Zimbalta I took that I had such a horrible reaction to where like I couldn't even like drink water I was like sipping water and uh, so I called you know he told me to call up the office regardless of how it went when I took it I took one and uh, talked to the receptionist and I was like listen I'm not taking that anymore I was like I I was sick from it and uh I can barely even, I couldn't eat at all. I can barely even drink water. And so she goes back and talks to the doctor. The doctor says, uh, you got to let that build up in your system. It takes a while. And I told her, you can tell him that I'd rather handle a live rattlesnake than take another one of those pills. And I'm not ever taking another one again. And she was like, okay, okay. You know, but I didn't say that word for word. I'd rather handle a live rattlesnake. And take another one of those pills. So, yeah, overall, ar overarch, overarch, <laughs> the general point to the whole thing is like, um, these people distrusted the medical community to know what they were doing and why they don't know. Uh, how benzos affect people. You know, maybe they go by the percentage of people that um, do okay with them. And they're like, uh, with like with the house, and they're like, eh, you know, most people, they not a big deal. They don't feel like they're paralyzed. Feel like they're paralyzed. I tried to move my arm, and I couldn't move my arm. After having um, spinal surgery and being told you could be a, a I couldn't move my arms or my legs. Told, uh, they told me before the surgery I could be a uh, quadriplegic or a paraplegic. And, uh, you know, maybe they think that way. Like, uh, well, you know, not everybody has this problem, but they don't seem to bother telling people like, uh, I'd be interesting, interested in hearing any percentages. Maybe I'll do a little research on that. Since I'm starting to feel a little better, even though my stomach is just evil. Um, find the percentages of the people that uh, really have a problem uh, with uh, their bad reaction to benzos. Because I've come across very few people but a few and I've talked to quite a few people over these last few years about it um, that came off of it and didn't have that much of a problem you know my aunt being one of them uh, but she mentioned that yeah okay you know she felt the chemical dependency but she didn't have no reaction like I did you know so 
whether they have those figures or not, or whether they're available or not, I don't know. But, um, anyways, um, I'm feeling, like I said, I'm feeling better. I'm having a little bit of, of trouble sleeping. I'm not completely over whatever uh, evil little bacteria or whatever got in me or virus or whatever it was. I'm thinking it was just a severe cold and it's gonna, I'm going to feel it for a little while longer yet because with the flu type B you generally you get the shaking chills and stuff in the super high fever and uh, even though I didn't have a thermometer to know what my you know to know what was up temperature wise I didn't have any really high fever you can usually feel that and so I'm thinking it's just a bad cold. Uh, it's bad enough. Um, my story I told the other day about working with my dad. It's just another one of the many things that I had forgotten. Um, I believe he did have a heart attack before that incident. Um, I... You know, because a lot of times this stuff floats up in my mind and then later on more details will come up, you know. So, um, as a follow-up to that, it's like I am pretty sure he had a heart attack before we were doing that work and that's why I was like, you know, why in the hell are we doing this? You know, but he had already been mand mandatorily retired from Timpkins, um, he was about 60 years old when he was roughing that dude up when, like lifting him up with one arm and he had already had a heart attack. Um, but he, he would take breaks from, he would get winded and he would take breaks because you got like, you had these molds in the shape of park bench legs made out of wood that you had to mix the concrete into. And uh, I think that's how that went. Damn it! It's not the, it's not a benzo thing. It's just a lot of stuff happened to me when I was young, and it all gets like I had a very like strange existence, as you probably know. Anyways, the point being is he had already had a heart attack, and now I remember that like seeing his face red like that that I was afraid for him. I was afraid for both of them because I thought he was gonna kill the one guy. And I thought he was going to die because his face turned so red. So, uh, you know, now I, I, I remember it a little better. The images, it's funny how pictures will st stay with you. But the image of the guy's toe with uh, the one leg off the ground. And the way he was, you know, practically lifting him off the ground with one arm. And, um, eh. Guy was only like he's a little dude. He was only like five foot five, five foot six, or something like that. Probably weighed. He had some weight to him, so he probably weighed like one seventy five, one eighty. But um, my dad was pissed. He was he was not happy. He wasn't feeling good that day because I don't know he we were doing like extremely strenuous labor and he that he wasn't supposed to be doing. And he had had a heart attack. So yeah, that was after his first heart attack that that incident happened. I couldn't remember that. It's sort of like the deal with the, uh, when I couldn't remember the story about him uh, nearly kicking the sergeant guy to death. Um, you know, that came back to me. It comes back to me later sometimes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I told you not to fuck with me, Jack. Didn't I tell you not to fuck with me? <laughs> and believe me, you could have heard a pin drop. And, uh, you know, there was like six guys there. None of them interceded. None of them wanted any part of it. You know, because my dad had an aura about him. Even like depleted like he was. He was like 60 years old. 
you know, it's just, they were like, okay, man, whatever. He was the boss. He was the guy paying everybody, too, you know. If my dad killed him or, or bust him up, uh, there's a problem, you know, but nobody interceded. But their paychecks were dependent on uh, the jack guy that was getting ragdolled and roughed up by my dad, but nobody got involved in it. They didn't want no part of my dad at 60. Okay, everybody likes to, you know, it's like it's like a trope. Is that a word they use nowadays? Oh, my dad is such a badass, blah, 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 or whatever. But um, no, I'm just telling it like it is. That's, that's how that happened. I just didn't think of that yesterday, you know. It's like, yeah, those guys were all getting paid because of that guy, and nobody jumped to his defense, and nobody said a word to my dad about that. And nobody talked about it the whole damn day, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. A unique character. That's what everybody used to say. He's such a character. You know. Character out of a Martin Scorsese movie, man. Oh, damn, that was nasty. I'm, I'm sorry for doing this, but I was having a rough, rough time. <laughs> Life is hard, what can I tell you? This is something that that beautiful girl with all the well-applied makeup wouldn't do on camera. They got those stupid dosing cups that are always so hard to clean. And they're like, always use dosing cup. Fuck you. With your dosing cups that are hard to clean. You know, I probably got pink lipstick on. But, uh, yeah, the things like the background details, like, always escape me. You know. In those stories and, like, the thing with the sergeant is, like, I didn't think about the sergeant's point. I didn't think about it from the sergeant's point of view. Like, one of the reasons he probably kept quiet is, like, he was like, he understood that this guy will murder me if I have any more trouble with him. He already kicked the living shit out of me mercilessly, literally kicked, you know, kicked him until he got tired is what my dad said. And uh, could barely walk and everything. I never thought of that aspect of it. And I never thought of the aspect where we were on the job. And um, I was in my late 20s. You see, my dad was born in 33. I was born in 67. You really don't want me to do the math, do you? Nah. You know how good I am at math. But, uh, yeah. Those guys' paychecks. I remember one of the guys was really cool. His name was Dave. But uh, nobody, like, interceded on behalf of the boss. And they were all getting paid under the table. And uh, there was, it wasn't like there was only a couple of guys there. There was at least six guys there that could have, like, broke it up. But nobody was touching my dad. Nobody was doing nothing. And it didn't happen as fast as I recounted it because my dad didn't want to quit. You know, I just recounted it quickly, you know, where he just had his arm up and was like, 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 you know, basically, did not tell you not to fuck with me, but it went out a lot longer than that. And he wouldn't let go of his arm and just kept shaking his fucking arm. And, um, you know, like, like I said, making him do St. Vitus's dance on one toe. Uh, for a long time until he made sure he understood because the guy the jack guy had balls but he was and he was wacky and like a, a, a gambling addict but he wanted to make him understand that you know he 
don't do this again or we're going to mix you up in the concrete and Jimmy Hoffa your ass, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we being him and his many personalities, you know. So he wouldn't let go of them until, you know, he was like, okay, 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 uh, okay, Pete, okay, okay, all, all right, you know. But he, it, it went on for a while. Um, but stuff like that just kind of surfaces in my mind. I don't, you know, you got to pass like that. You don't want to really dwell on it. It's not healthy. Um, you know, but it's just funny that that stuff became like ordinary you know it's so ordinary that oh yeah I remember this one story you know and like like I always said like I had like the hammer of the gods for a right fist you know and then I punched the door and about fell over because I don't have a good plant leg but uh my younger brother um hit my foster brother like sucker punched him because he was like my daddy fair there wasn't no fair fight there's just a fight how you know whatever come down come went down but uh my foster brother started to walk away from my younger brother i might have told this one before and my younger brother reached around for added momentum of course grabbed him by the shoulder reared back punched him in the face and we had a couch that was pulled away from the wall and knocked him over the couch and knocked the couch over. And my foster brother said that his jaw was dislocated and he had to pop his jaw back in place. And later on in his life, he got beat up by a bouncer, one, by two, by a, a bouncer with brass knuckles he said my brother hit harder. My younger, he said he's never been hit, and he's been in a lot of fights. He, he's never been hit harder than my brother hit him. He dislocated his jaw, and he had uh, Mel Gibson, you know, in Lethal Weapon, where he pops his shoulder back in, he had to pop his own jaw back in place and stuff. And that's, um, I wasn't there to see it. My older brother was, so I've heard, I heard three accounts of it. Though my younger brother didn't say much about it. Uh, I heard it from my older brother and I heard it from, believe me, I heard it from my foster brother many times. Um, but <laughs> my older brother was like, dude, just stay down. If you get up, it's going to do the same thing to you again. Just stay down. And that pissed my foster brother off. Um, but uh, he really didn't want no more anyway, you know. But it pissed him off that he felt like my older brother was taking sides. I'm starting to lose my voice now. Um, man, growing up like that ain't normal. And you know, that was just another day at the office. There's just so, so many memories like that where, uh, yeah, my mom probably saved my foster brother's life that one time because, um, again, I blame it on the lack of video games, but um, I'm holding up a mattress. He's supposed to kick the mattress and practice his kicking, Okay. But he does a spinning back kick and kicks me in the face. Now, I could always take abuse to the face. I hated getting hit in the stomach. But he he kicked me so hard that I went flying back into the wall and hit the wall and slid down the wall. And, you know, I blinked my eyes. And I was like, oh, you son of a bitch. And my mom was standing in the doorway, and that's what scared him. Is he said, he said, uh, uh, 
my mom's name was um, Grace, and he said he was thinking to himself, "Oh my God, he swore in front of Aunt Grace. He swore in front of his mom. I'm a dead man." But she was there, and you know, she broke it up. You know, I, I don't know. I wasn't going to do anything with my mom there. Later on, probably did something to him. Don't remember. But uh, I remember getting kicked, and that was, yeah, that was a sweet kick. It was. It was just like it, he was supposed to kick me in the chest, and he kicked me in the face. But uh, that's what we did for fun. With stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's it's just. Um, so, thing, the thing with the, my dad and Jack, I, I haven't thought about for years and years. It's all like uh, a mismatch of violence and madness. And can't really keep it all in order. Now, how, why would this be comforting? I, I, I started out saying that, you know, um, this kind of stuff might be comforting. Why would hearing stories of like violence be comforting to people? Or maybe it's the fact that you know that I'm suffering in a great deal of pain and yet I'm calm and smiling and amused, you know. But then again, I don't have many viewers, so um, I think it's mainly due to off-putting presentation and, you know, uh, loss of hair and, I, and people have commented on the videos I've made where I was like oh you're sitting they make jokes about you know you're sitting up wearing a shirt you know it's like uh, it is what it is man I'm gonna turn this light off if you don't mind if you don't visit with me for, for a while here. Okay. I'm still going to turn it off. Because I got, still got reflections. I still got reflections in my eyes. But, um, oh, stuff happened yesterday. Uh, I'm supposed to go in on the 17th to uh, see the guy who prescribes me the volume. He has a scheduling conflict, so I have to cancel that appointment, remake an appointment. And, uh, cancel yet again my transportation. Yes, I am still not 100%. I am not even 70%. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've, I've, I just felt like an idiot when I was talking to the social worker guy named Brent because you know he made it seem like a social call at first but really he just wanted to make an appointment but what it was is I called him just because I was like this is a guy that wants to help me move I want to move I don't want him to forget me you know I'm like I'm like this is nothing important I'm just checking in and he called me back the next day and uh, I start babbling about, you know, because so, he said, oh, you play guitar, I play guitar too. So I start babbling about guitars. And um, this was unnecessarily beating myself up, but he had to cut. He's at work, you know. And I'm talking about like a, a 1960s, 1960 Gibson arch top that I had the frets remade on. And I'm just babbling like an idiot. You know, I got excuses like, um, I don't know. I didn't know it, this was really about him making an appointment with me for the 20th. He says he's working on some things for me. Um, but yeah, I felt like an idiot. You know, I was like, like I necessarily beat myself up over that because <laughs> he was like, man, I gotta go. You know, and he basically hung up on me. You know, and it's not a big deal. But I was like, I was like, oh, what, what, what's wrong with me? Why did I act like that? I was like, eh whatever 
I don't know if you ever do that where you're like um, replay uh, things that you say or um, conversations that you have or how you behave and analyze like uh, I did pretty good there you know or like oh I was just a flammy uh, turd bag <laughs> You know, but, you know, but no, I, 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 I don't know, just kind of felt like talking, like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, um, uh, what my focus should be here, how much I can handle, um, my main focus, of course, is the moving out of here, but I also have the leg thing, and it's like, you know, I made that mistake with my teeth, where I'm like, I'm focusing on getting my leg fixed. Then not only do I not get my leg fixed, but I'm not taking care of my teeth. Maybe I would have more teeth now. So sometimes, I guess, you know, when life throws five things at you, you have to handle three things at once. You can't take it one at a time. It's just um, being like benzo damaged, I guess you could call me. Um, it's just hard not to take one thing at a time. So like, shut up, stomach. Goodness gracious. Um, so maybe I should like make an appointment with my primary caregiver, talk to him about the uh, broken toes, and the uh, uh, Omni Orthopedic situation. Uh, I don't think calling them is a good idea at this point. I don't think it will do anything. They'll be like, who the fuck are you? Because that happened so long ago that I don't even remember how long ago that I faxed in permission for my medical records and they told me to wait and they would call me yeah I could do that I mean I could look up their number and I could call them and say like you know I could run through what happened and like uh, but man my experience you know I of course talked about farting doctors and derided or just reminded people that doctors are just fallible human beings like the rest of them I mean, after all, I went to one that was a sexaholic and got himself murdered over it. That guy actually cardio cardio damn mouth cardioverted my heart uh, at least once, and uh, so it doesn't matter though. The guy's got that dr before his name. That means DR means get shit done. Uh, yeah. So, I'm thinking maybe that's what I should do. I don't think I should do what I did with the leg and the teeth, which is like leg, concentrating on the leg, everything about the leg. The leg is the cause of my problems. Like, I just went to the dentist and, uh, November, I had a heart thing in December, uh, last half of December, January, February, March, April, all concentrating on the leg. Now whether any of this would have been preventable or not, and I could say words without getting frustrated, and um, I don't know, but Maybe I have to juggle more than one plate. It's not really juggling if you're just like throwing one plate up in the air. But you get the picture. And uh, deal with that. Dealing with the boredom's kind of rough too. I mean, uh, you got the, the cabin fever type thing. So a lot of times, you know, it's like, eh, I should stop talking now. What else? What am I gonna do? You know? 
my voice is messed up so I can't practice reading my book. I mean, I actually have a book finished I could put up, but maybe they'll hit me with copyright infringement. Though, why? I don't know. If I put Eric from Escape from Freedom, which I have a finished copy of, up, and don't do a better... I was going to redo the uh, not the psych psychology behind Nazism chapter because I didn't like it. I didn't like the way I did it. Uh, but I could put put that up. Um, but I don't really get a chance. You know, I, I got all these like they're not really grand plans. They're like, okay, I just want to read a couple of audio books or I just want to do this. I never finished Sinbad the Sailor. I got two, the guy had seven voyages. I think I did two of them. There's always something getting in the way, man. There's always something going wrong. There's always some madness in this building or some physical malady assaulting me. I remember like the beginning of the summer of love, love of meth, <laughs> love of squatters how that summer began was uh, in May the, uh, 7 in the morning that was my alarm clock was the shingles falling off the roof the shingles hissed by my window <laughs> I wish I, I can't even I can't do that man there's a door song the cars hissed by my window like a wave out on the beach maybe I don't know lyrics escape me I can't I can't do lyrics at all now my voice is starting to hurt and my excuse for the length of this video if I need one is uh, um, I have been very ill and haven't been able to do much of anything even um, walking on my uh, broken toes and my messed up knee and stuff um, financially I'm doing better than I thought which is cool I came into some money a small amount of money which is cool I'm going to come into some more money because I was able, uh, able to sell something with no effort on my part so I knew I had something and wanted it and I'm speaking about it mysteriously for some reason that's a Christmas present for someone that um, I no longer need and uh, I looked up like Nick Chubb uh, autograph cards because I got like a bunch of those and uh, he's leading the league in rushing but I'm not selling those because the Browns are kind of synonymous with suck right now. Not that they haven't always been synonymous with suck in uh, the last 20 years. Um, you know, since really the Browns are the Ravens. Crap. Let me, get, let me check the number. Ontario. <laughs> I'm just throwing it away from the microphone I'm not even declining it in case they leave a message some, some Canadian maybe that's um, a friend of mine in Canada telling me he just caught a 70 pound king salmon hey uh, but yeah I don't know what the hell I was talking about now. Eh, it's okay Oh, I was, uh, a part of this I was going to say was like, um, I also noticed these people on here that uh, talk really fast and stuff like they, they're always talking about like uh, the breathing aspects of like how to calm yourself down and like, oh yeah, I got lucky on, in, in that way because I had already knew how to medit get in a meditative state, generate alpha waves, you know, be calm. I already knew how to do that before, you know, the, the whole benzo dragon jumped on, jumped on my back. Um, so, and plus I was prepared by 
Uh, yeah. This steel was forged in the mines of Moria, man. By the dwarves. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying it would take Mel Mount Doom to melt this son of a bitch. But, uh, you know, I went through all that torture and stuff before I was 20 years old and then had CRPS, so... Um, that's why I'm able to appear on here. Uh, it's relatively calm. Mm -hmm. Slightly sane human being. Uh, and plus I had a very weird past and upbringing and just a very strange, horrific life in general. Um, so that could be why I have that massive 24 viewer audience. I don't know. I know that um, when things do get better for me, and they will, you know, I get out of here. Man, I get out of here into an environment where I got quiet, you know, where I got stability, where I don't have any beef with anybody. Where, like, maybe I'm not even seeing a landlord. I'm just mailing in checks. You know? Um, which, I don't have checks. <laughs> just, you know, it's always been cash with this guy. You know, he just told me up front that he preferred cash. And, uh, you know, this other dude next door, he, he sends him a check, but he, he likes cash because it gives him the opportunity to come into the his property and look around. And uh, cash is king, but um, I think he's kind of used to doing a cash business because he's taking a lot of drug money. And, uh, you know, you don't write, uh, it's forty dollars for my crack, but please do not cash this check until Tuesday. And that's not how that works. So, yeah, I mean, once I get out of here, sure, I'll put a shirt on and I'll set up and I'll have a different environment. And um, yeah, and maybe wear a hat, cut it to the side. Or maybe, like, do something signature, like uh, bring back the top hat. Four score and seven benzos ago, you know. Uh, the scatterbrain bird, <laughs> I should have quit while I was ahead. I don't, mind, I don't mind being foolish, believe me. Being foolish is, um, if you're not afraid, uh, if, if you're afraid to uh, fail, to look foolish, or to act stupid, you're never going to do anything interesting, you know, you're never going to pick up a guitar, and, uh, cause it's going to sound like crap on a guitar, when you first start playing it, you know, I mean, I'm, no, I'm still not very good at it, but occasionally I can sound musical, um, but you got to be willing to look foolish, you got to be willing to get shot down by women, you gotta be look. You gotta be willing to say uh, stupid things, and um, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. As far as the comedy thing, and um, yeah, maybe like uh, I'm. I'm at a good jumping off point as far as the benzos thing. It's like uh, to, I'm taking um, twenty to thirty milligrams of iron in this fucking nut house. So, uh, I'm just living in one room. I'm living in a, like I say, a prison cell. And, um, I don't get to go anywhere. I got a bad knee. I got two broken toes. And I'm still two to three volume a day. So I get out of here. I get a little relief. Maybe they do something about my knee. And, the toes are working on their second month, but 
Sometimes broken toes take two months to heal. Sometimes they take three months to heal. I am not a young man, so I'm not Wolverine when it comes to uh, healing. You know, when, when you're young, you heal faster, you bounce back faster. That's all there is to it. So, you know, I'm dealing with a lot of stuff, but I'm still keeping the, you know, I still have, I'm still, it's like, I'm 17 volume ahead of my prescription right now. So I feel good about the benzo situation. I just don't, I just feel bad about everything else. You know, I feel bad about living here. I'm hating everyone in the building, having a dog barking above me, and people having to watch out for shit, which is worse now that it snowed. It snowed yesterday because then you can't see it. And the snow is like, you know, it's not frozen out because it's like 30-ish. So the excrement is still pliable. That's as a polite way as I can say say that. Um, and not frozen, but you can't see where it is. So, yeah, I got a great shovel, but I'm not putting it out there. You know, I saw some. I don't, I don't barely open my door anymore. I was just looking for some gum that I ordered. But I um, opened my door and I went out in the hallway and I saw somebody had bought some salt. And I'm like, well, that was dumb. Cause I, I got like a gigantic bag of salt that I bought already in, in the hallway. And I got a shovel too. But I am not putting in my, sho my shovel in the hallway because the last time there was crackheads in this building. And that shovel was a piece of crap. You know, that I actually had to take a hammer and straighten it out. The uh, It had like a corner that was folded over and stuff. And uh, that one got stolen the last time crackheads were in the building. I am not putting out my good shovel for <laughs> crackheads to steal. You know, uh, I used to do the shoveling myself up until, I think I did it a couple of times last year. I know, like I said, I like hard labor when I can get away with it. And um, even with my balance issues in my legs, I can hold on to the railing on the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, wheelchair ramp and just push with the shovel and then you know, hold on to the railing and push with the shovel and get a scoop and then, and then I clear an area to the garbage cans and then to the street. I used to like shovel all the way to the neighbors that way and all the way to the neighbors that way. And, um, you know, it's good for you. That's, um, yeah, that kind of stuff's good. That kind of exercise is good for you, man. Like lifting weights. I mean, what ha the weights are back over there that's what you've done you've taken weights and you've moved them around and then you put them back there but when you shovel you can look when you're done and you see what all you did so that's why I like that um, you can look in a mirror you know when you got your muscles and uh, be like you know have that same effect as like looking at all that you just shovel and you're like, wow, that's a lot of shoveling I did when you're shoveling snow. But uh, somehow it's not the same. Um, well, I'm talking to be talking, but I do that. And I don't think my voice is uh, quite mellifluous at the moment. So that's about an hour. And, um, yeah, I'm starting to feel it now a little bit as far as, um, the volume thing. I feel like irritated, uh, but I think I covered what I wanted to in this video that I was watching other people's videos. And, um, I wanted to, um, elaborate on the, uh, story with the uh, Jack guy 
and my dad because uh, I remembered it. And uh, yeah, this seems like it's going to take a while for me to get better. My throat is not liking me right now. Hopefully you still are. My loyal few. And, uh, <clears throat> so, I'm up, I'm actually optimistic. You know, I got a guy that's going to help me to get out of here. And I don't, I'm not going to be moving a lot of stuff. I, I'm willing to take a huge financial loss as far as, like, if I can't move that thing I paid, or over there I paid uh, $565 for, it stays. I'll take, I'll take the loss just to get out of here. You know, I take personal, small personal items. And, uh, just leave everything here and just go. Just escape like a battered woman in the middle of the night. Just leave everything here. They're just things. They just kind of weigh you down. I'll have to take my heater. I have to take, like I say, my manuscripts. And, um, of course, computer microphone just a few items I don't I ain't even thinking about no U-Haul or nothing like that I never did like like any new coffee pot to leave the coffee pot here you know why am I going into all this detail it's not important the important thing is is um I'm still at a good jumping point off for the benzos. I feel confident that um, once I get out of here, that I can uh, get off benzos finally. I don't know if I'll get my clarity of mind back. I don't know if I'll remember, you know, I'll be able to tell a story completely and not come back and say, oh yeah, th this happened in this story and this happened and all that. I mean, I don't know what I'll be like, but hey, that makes it interesting. I, don't know. I would rather not have the interesting experience of uh, benzo torture, but it's been interesting. And uh, I have a unique story now because there's not too many people in benzo withdrawal that um, lived in a meth house that was actually part of a meth uh, production process involving um, my address is 625 I don't care man Come in, you know, I don't care and the house is 630 <laughs> and I can hit it with a stone from my porch and it's a meth cookhouse in other words if it blows up you know boards from the house would actually hit my building and I, you know not too many people have the story of um, being in a situation like that while trying to quit meth. You know, it's made a lot of interesting stories for me. It's at least been interesting. You know, that's the problem. It's like the most interesting stories are usually uh, horrific. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean... Boy, we had a great day at the amusement park. The kids were great. And, um, you know, they had fun and the food was good. And what's more interesting to hear about that? Or uh, my dad uh, grabbing that guy's arm, the guy that's paying everybody on the job site, and nobody on the job site challenging a 60 year old man or per trying to break it up. And these are all young dudes. You know, these are the, the. My dad was the oldest guy there, and the Jack guy was a close second. And uh, these are all guys that are um, lifting 80 to 100 pound concrete sacks, and they still don't know what, no part of my dad. 
<laughs> at 16 post heart attack what's more interesting you know oh man the dentist trip was a breeze you know I went in there and it all went smoothly or uh, oh my god man I feel like I got hit in the face by Joe Frazier and, and, and I can't go to sleep because I feel like I'm going to gag on my own blood you know there's a reason why there's violence in movies and um, uh, horror movies are so popular and um you know, <laughs> it's just it's bad shit makes better stories. So I got a lot of good stories out of this place. Uh, did I ever pic picture myself like, you know, carrying a machete in a rage and walking out in the hall and chasing away a 25 year old dude and then having him threaten my life um, and tell me, um, you don't have long for this world, old man. Did I ever picture anything like that in my future? No. Did I ever think that I would have, like, um, get sprayed with bug poison and throw a landlord off of his own property and tell him later that, like, you know, 20 years ago, uh, you know, he knew what I meant. 20 years ago would have been a real ugly. Um, so, yeah, how things go today at work, honey? Oh, everything went smoothly, you know, the boss was great, and, uh, my co-workers are wonderful people. Well, the first thing I did was I poured hot coffee all over my lap and burned my testicles, which is a better story. <laughs> It's pretty, it's pretty simple mathematics as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> oh, shit. The sad part is, is like, um, you know, I can only remember some of the stories, you know. And I can't remember, like, uh, many of these salient details. I'm doing this off camera. Salient details. Like, I'll never forget that conversation with my, with my brother when uh, he was like, he, this is a good repeat and a short one, where um, he was like, I shot somebody once. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I shot somebody once. I was like, why did you shoot somebody? Oh, he was stealing a bike, meaning a motorcycle, in which I knew what he meant. And I, and I said, he was stealing your bike? He goes, no, it wasn't my bike. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, I, I was coming out of the woods when I was hunt, hunting, and I had my uh, 22 with me, my 22 rifle, and I saw this guy stealing this guy's motorcycle, so I shot him. And I said, you shot him? And he, and he was like, just in the leg. You know. <laughs> He just, you know, <laughs> you just can't make stuff. You can't make stuff like that up, you know. And I'm hearing this. I'm 15, 16, 17. I'm just, you know, yeah. You know, and I know it's true. I know what my I, my my brother. I know my brother took a cop's gun off of him and threw it away from him and said, what are you going to do now? I know that's true. And um, he didn't tie him over that. And I know that um, uh, he used to kitchen hunt. I know he used to come home and put frozen bags of peas on his hands uh, after hitting somebody. I know that he taught me how to box and uh, I split his lip. And I know what the look in his eye was probably the last thing a couple of people saw until they woke up. <laughs> and I was like, no more boxing. Done with the boxing. You know. So, like I said, I somebody told me, I was like, oh, that makes you an interesting person. I'm like, yeah, being interesting is overrated. You know, there's a lot to be said for being boring. Um, 
And it's like, uh, I do remember that person saying, like, I was telling some of this stuff, and they're like, like, but it makes you an interesting person. And I'm like, like, you don't think about that while you're going through that shit. You know, while you're going through your surgeries and, you know, you're waking up feeling like you're paralyzed and possessed by the devil and uh, getting your spine reconstructed and you get CRPS and um, you nearly get beat to death in school and, you know, um, you grow up with a man like my father and, you know, it's, it's not all that interesting when you're going through it. They make it just makes the best stories. Just look at look at movies. Look at what people watch for entertainment. But my voice is gone now. I talked myself hoarse. And um, hopefully that was entertaining. And you are dismissed. <laughs> just did I salute at the beginning of this? I don't even remember. If I. I I think I saluted and I said, Eddie, soldier, at the beginning of this. But I was going to do a callback, but I don't even know if I did a callback to the right video. But someday that will change. And, um, yeah, and I'm going to hang around for that. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind that I will be benzo free. I mean, there's not a doubt. You know, this isn't. That the shit that I've been through in here, and I still managed to improve my situation, and I still managed to have a good jumping off point, and I'm still ahead on my prescriptions, and, uh, you know, I'm still alive, and I'm still kicking, and I'm still fighting. That proves that I, if I get out of here into a place with no hostility, no extra noise, peace and quiet, stability, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm saying it's going to be done. And then we'll see what I'm like. What if I'm boring? Oh, that would be horrible, wouldn't it? If, if, if it's like, uh, okay, I'm all used up now. No, but I won't, you know, I won't leave y'all hanging. All y'all that's, uh, yeah, however many few people that have been following me, man. I mean, I owe you that much. Let you see me uh, doing well and healthy. And I might even, I'll tell you what, I might even invest in some fancy shirts and wear a tie. I might even, like, have, like, a little, like, AA medallions made, you know. Like, uh, this is my uh, silver anniversary. That doesn't work. But, uh, you know, have like... Wouldn't that be funny to see me in a suit? You know, like, like buy a suit. Start appearing on here in a suit. Uh, maybe get some fancy hats to cover up the... Uh, unusual hairstyle or actually far too usual hairstyle but you know grass doesn't grow on a busy street mister as I've said before I just heard that that was a line off of Barney Miller uh, that stuck in my head back when I used to have hair on my head and uh vain glorious hair man like um God went and loved my hair. I love that wavy shit. It was all thick and stuff. You know? I think I told the story that guys liked my hair too. So, like, uh, yeah, I've told that story before. But we'll run through it just because it's funny. And I'll make it short. But uh, my foster brother had a friend named Doug. Everybody knew Doug was gay. Gay as hell. Nothing wrong with that. It... But he was just oblivious to the fact. The dude's a homophobe. No gaydar whatsoever. So, you know, I'm there with my glorious locks of hair, of wavy, uh, brown, touched, like dew in the morning, streaked with the 
sunlight highlight natural hair. You know, I've actually had a woman tell me that. She's like, it's like you have to have natural highlights in your hair from, you must spend some time outdoors. And uh, she was hitting on me in a video store while I was renting a porno. Probably a good time to hit on most guys, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Like, don't I know you from such and such school? And then she was making small talk. She was talking about how the sun highlighted my brown hair and lightened it in certain places, like naturally, and all this stuff. And I'm like, can I just take my copy of uh, uh, Bubble Butt 3 and go home and do what I need to do and get the fuck out of here, please? <laughs> That's the last thing is you want is chit chat because you have to do the VHS store thing back in the day you didn't you know you didn't have uh, the convenience of watching whatever uh, you wanted to watch on a computer <laughs> just jumped right in the middle of that one but yeah one of the funniest things I ever saw from back in the day is uh, we had like a in downtown Canton I don't remember the name um, Tower Books maybe I don't remember but it was the dirt we just called it the dirty bookstore but of course they had the videos in there and stuff and like there there was a guy he almost had a cape you know but he was like he hit around the corner of the building and I was watching him and he like looked around like this you know, you know and he had a hat a baseball hat like pulled down over his eyes and then like he sprinted into the into the uh, dirty bookstore as we used to call it and uh, <laughs> so I was sitting there laughing but anyways, back to the, the that's off of the uh, the gay dude, like where um, everybody knew this guy was gay, but his best friend, and uh, he was the guy who had the Playboy channel and never watched it, and where he's just like, we're at his house, and he's flipping through his channels, and you know, there's some tits, and he just goes right by him, and we're like, whoa, 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 whoa go back, go back, go back, because we're, we're young, and um, teens, and um, He's like, yeah, um, that's the Playboy channel. We're like, you got the Playboy channel? Because that was like the only thing out um, back then. That was like the closest thing you had to video uh, pornography. And uh, it was all censored and stuff. You know, they had simulated, simulated sex scenes where the parts didn't even match up vaguely. You know, it was just some kind of and you know it was it was just weird but anyways um this guy I was, t I was talking about having that crazy hair this guy just started running his fingers through my hair and called me Captain Hairdo and I was like whoa <laughs> dude hands to yourself please <laughs> you know <laughs> but you didn't need a map pointing the gay town with that dude man and uh yeah he he did the whole beard thing for a while to the point where he had um uh, a wife and a and a child and then he went full drag queen but um yeah I already I talked about that stuff before I'm just destroying my vocal cords and uh giving you something to listen to that may or may not be amusing. But yeah, that's what people like. You see, they like violence and sex. I'm sorry. It's just, you know, it's what's. Watch the movies. There's a lot of that stuff in movies. You know. Um, not that um, pornography, not really. I guess it's sex. I mean, I don't know what, what you would call that. Onanism. I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's how it used to be. And you used to have to earn your pornography back in the day, man. You know, I got busted by somebody I haven't seen for years coming out of the porno section of video time uh, back when everything was VHS. And uh, I come out those swinging doors. It was, it was just for younger people, which I doubt any younger people 
I would bet my bottom dollar no younger people was watching this, but they had Batwing doors and it said adult section and you go back through there and it'd be dead quiet, you know. It's quieter than church in the porno section of a video store. And uh, one time <laughs> this guy went in there taking out a video with his girlfriend his girlfriend didn't understand the quiet rule where nobody wants to talk to anybody. You don't like talk to another guy and say, hey man, have you seen this one? It's just all silence. And, you know, it's it's creepy, frankly. And um, she just chattering away like a magpie, you know, and like making everybody nervous. And she didn't understand um, uh, the adult section back of the video store etiquette thing at all and uh you know it's like <laughs> different times man but yeah as far as stories you know when life's going well and life's going pleasant there can be interesting stories like um like that like it's interesting to hear that um my best friend's son is a ping pong champion and um uh, actually makes like a hundred dollars just to talk to people on the computer to Skype about ping pong for like an hour. It's like paid a hundred dollars an hour because he's one of the top ping pong players in the United States. And it's like, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of interesting and there's nothing seedy or violent or sexual about that it's just kind of you know so it's not it's not like stuff can't be interesting with it's just like as far as stories and movies and stuff you just you look at what people like for entertainment and it's a reflection of the society because you know people pay to see certain things you know, I don't think anybody is going to pay to see a movie about somebody who's so good at ping pong that they can make $100, $100 just talking about it for an hour to somebody in Korea. You know, and uh, anyway, that's enough. Enough foolishness out of me. But I don't mind being foolish. I mean, after all, I am. I'm not. One, I am foolish because um, I took a benzodiazepine without even knowing the word, and did not uh, check into what I was putting into my body. And ironically enough, feared uh, chemical dependency and addiction my whole life. I did not count the time that I was on morphine because those were extreme circumstances and um, I had just had major uh, back surgery and was worried about walking and whatnot so I kind of that you know when I rewatched that I was like well that, that experience really isn't relevant to what this experience is that was different because I said I had never experienced anything like that before when I was like I had my first bout of real withdrawal. I had withdrawal then, but I was also losing my goddamn mind and was 16 years old and had just had major surgery and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, this was a different type of withdrawal anyway. But, you know, I try to keep track of things, little things like that. But, um... Yeah, I look forward to the day where I make a nice, crisp, 30-minute video. And I'm not just killing time on here. And I'm wearing a suit. And not my uh, novelty shirt that looks like a suit. And it's like, I'll have to do that. Buy a cheap-ass suit. 
and uh, do that. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to make a promise to do that. Uh, when I've been benzo free, we'll make it six months. But it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm a strong willed dude, and you don't get to be that way. If, I mean, you don't survive 34 years of CRPS without being a strong-willed dude. You don't wait out meth heads and uh, squatters and, and uh, threaten them out of your building and confront them. Unless you're a strong-willed dude. I am mild-mannered ordinarily, but somewhere in here there's a whole bunch of iron besides that steel rod in my back. And it's something that I found out about myself, that I was a wishy-washy kid just because my dad was a dragon, a terrifying mythological beast <laughs> of a man. So, of course, I was like uh, timid. It's called survival. But um, at some point, I even stood up to him. And uh, that was at a time before he had a heart attack where you know, it's like taking your life in your hands, uh, doing, saying that shit to my dad, stuff that I said to him, which I don't remember my, any of except for that I called him a mean son of a bitch and gotten it right up in his face and said it to him eye to eye. And, um, you know. But him being so cold and calculated and calm and so used to things like that, you know, he was thinking... He knew, and I knew, that if it went into anything physical, there'd be police, hospitals, possible death, you know, that sort of thing. So... Really, he was in control, and I was out of control. But um, that surprised me that I had that in me. And I guess that's what life is supposed to be about, right? Self-discovery. Now, if I could only discover how to shut up, and I will figure that out and find other ways to occupy my time. <laughs> because after all, you could have just watched a beautiful romantic comedy movie. Uh, knitted yourself a nice Afghan robe. Um, oh, shoot. Danced a nice uh, samba at a club somewhere, depending upon the time of night. You could have done a lot of things, perhaps besides listen to me chatter on endlessly. And uh, I already gave you your dismissal and your farewell salute. So anything after that, I take no responsibility for. And um, as always, thank you for listening. And I always, man, I always wish people the best, man. I, I, I think that... Uh, it, we live in a, in a world made up of individuals and um, every, everybody talks about politics and rule from the outside and all this stuff it's like no 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 forget all forget all about that you know forget all about that the world changes one person at a time man. one person at a time so if um Listening to me helps a person or two, you know, get through their day or whatever, or, you know, gives them a smile. And my, my, uh, just general ridiculousness, I mean, uh, or maybe just, uh, helps them kill some time when they're not feeling all that good. Hey, man. That is an honor to do. So, 
you know, that's if that's the, if that's just doing my part, that's cool. But that that is how the world has to change, is one person at a time. And you have to understand that whole Gestalton thing, that whole forest that uh we're not just a bunch of trees, man. We're a forest, and we're all dependent upon each other. And um, what, what we do affects everybody else. And a small kindness sends out ripples in a pond. You know, just like throwing a brick in the, in the water it disrupts everything. And uh, scares all the fish and makes that little underwater world an unhappy place. And so, you know, that's what you do is you, 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 you know, the, what do they say? I'll, I'll just use a cliche to end this with. They say, don't, you know, don't uh, try to be a great man. Just try to be a good man. Try to be a good person. And uh, whatever small kindnesses you do throughout the course of your day, like just uh, sometimes just refraining from saying unnecessary things that might be hurtful. Um, sometimes that even that makes a difference. So. You know, listen to me being all lamely philosophical at the end of a uh, self-indulgent 100 million minute gab fest. Anyways, I will uh, do this again. And uh, someday you will see me. I, I promise you, you will see me in a suit and you will see me sober. And the Benzo thing will be in the past. You know, it will be. And, uh, hey, not just be belief is powerful, but not just because I, I believe it either. It's because I know I can do it. I just need the right environment to do it in. And it will happen. And it's already happened to some, for some people that watch maybe watching this but if you're you know watching this happened for you too and I don't want to be a cautionary tale I want to be I. that's why I started doing this stuff is I thought I could make something inspirational I didn't know my life would turn it into some kind of post apocalyptic wasteland with a, a crazy ass uh gangs of uh, drug gangs ruling the neighborhood and all this. <laughs> I had no idea any of this crap was going to happen. I thought I was going to actually make a series of videos scanning, spanning possibly three months that would be inspirational. I did not know like the rest of us I did not know what the future held for me. I did not know any of this stuff, crazy stuff, was going to happen. And uh, I had no idea what was going to happen. But uh, regardless, it happened. And uh, this is one of those times when I feel the self-loathing of the hundredth goodbye. <laughs> and so for the hundredth time, man, you're probably just, if you haven't clicked off of this already, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> Goodbye.